Hey folks, hope you're well. I'm hoping this vlog comes out on time because I've just realized as I'm clicking go that I don't have access to the same software I used to use to make the vlogs. Um, I'm going to have to use the old one that is very clunky and slow and takes like two hours to process a video. So if this is out late, I'm sorry, um, but I am trying. If you've got any suggestions of software that I should use to make vlogs that isn't Adobe Premiere Pro, which I've just lost access to, then let me know because... It, that was perfect. I could click go in my lunch break. I'd vomit out a video and it'd be on the internet by the end of my lunch. And then at the end of work, I'd quickly type it up and then it'd be out. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's causing me an issue now. Um, so from my last video, I talked about how hectic things were. A few people have asked me how Ollie's getting on at school. Uh, he's still on half days and he is he's doing all right. He's doing a lot better at school. He's tired this week, very tired. But he... Um, yeah, it's just it's just on half days until the end of the first week back, essentially. Um, I feel like it's probably the best thing at the moment because of how tired he is. Um, I, it, we are trying to get him to do work at home, and they've sent some cool little stuff home. Yesterday we were watching Beowulf. Um, I'm a bit miffed. They sent him a, a video to watch, and it was like 360p quality, and it was really boring. And I ended up finding him a, a YouTuber who had drawn like little animations. So imagine like Jaden animations, if you know them. Um, so it's like stick people or just white background with black ink kind of outlining him. Someone else has done that. I can't remember the name of it. I wrote down the name, but I've got not got it to hand. Um, but they explain historic stories. So they'd done this whole visual explanation of Beowulf summarized into five minutes. It was perfect, except it said the word crap in it. And I wasn't expecting that. And I thought, God damn it. If you hadn't have said that one word, I could have sent that to school and they could have used it. But the fact that they said crap means that they can't now use it in a school environment. But Ollie had already, it was right at the end. And Ollie, or at least I only noticed it at the end. Um, and Ollie watched it. We watched it twice, actually. And I know I probably shouldn't have made him watch it the second time, but we watched it twice because I wanted him to remember the story effectively. He was struggling really hard to follow the um, the boring one. I tried to talk to him about it. And then I found that one. And she just talked through the story about how, you know, they're having a party. A monster came over and tried to fight them. Beowulf defeated the monster. The monster's mum turned up. He defeated the mum. You know, blah, blah, blah. It made it sound very cool. She was very witty. It was very cool art, like drawings that she'd done, doodles and that. And uh, when I asked Ollie to explain the story back to me, he understood it. He remembered it. He got it. I was like, problem solved. So uh, that was positive. So we tried to get him to do other bits for it. And on the way home today, I've been lecturing him about how when we get home, you have to do some work. You have to do this. You have to do that. And the cheeky little git says to me, shouldn't they be making me do this work at school? <laughs> I was just like, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, mate. Like, it's been, it's been, what, five years? He's been at school. They are trying to get him to, they are trying to get him to do this work at school. I was just like, I can't believe what you're saying. Like, are we in insane world or something? Like, what do you think you're in there for? So um, I, I had a chat with him about that. I'm hoping that that means he might be more interested in working in school. Um, but, yeah, it's been, it, other than that, it's been interesting. He, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this. I don't think I've done a vlog since, but when I went to pick him up the other day, he was walking towards the door and he was going, and I thought, oh, he seems upset. What's wrong? And then when he when he came to the door, uh, his TA came to the door and he disappeared. And I was like, where's he gone? I could see him bending down. And um, the TA opened the door and was like, his laptop didn't have his bookmarks on it when he loaded it up. So he launched it across the room and the screens cracked. And I was like, oh. And uh, I was expecting him to be in, in a state because he seemed like he was in a state on his way to the door. And then uh, when I looked around the door, there were some chicks in a box that they would take. Some, uh, one of the ladies who works there runs a farm as well. And so she had chicks and she'd brought them in. And it, apparently they'd been in Ben's class all term and now they're going home. So Oliver got to see the chicks, stroke the chicks, lift them up, play with them. Um, he put one on the floor and every adult tensed and then he lifted it back up and put it in the box. And he was like, I just felt it should touch the floor once before it goes. I wanted it to experience the floor. And we were like, right, okay. And... Uh, talking to him he, he 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 she said the ta said to me he's just literally switched from being absolutely devastated and all over the place and in a state to completely calm because of the chicks and i was like that's brilliant she was like you'd have to get one at home soon and ollie bloody heard and was like <laughs> he's been asking me all week since when are we getting a chick can i get a chick when i have a chick can i and i'm like you're not getting a chick i do not want to keep birds um you know we're, we're gonna be pet free after after molly because um 
it's just too it's just too heartbreaking when they get ill like it's nice at the beginning it's nice in the middle and then it becomes depressing <laughs> i don't really want the depressing part um at the moment it does not i mean it, i was gonna say it does not feel like uh one outweighs the other it feels more difficult because she was such a good dog so yeah you know, I don't really want to have to get a chick and then deal with that. So I said to him, when you're older, you can get chicks. And he realized if he gets a boy and a girl chick, he can get infinite chicks. And he's, he was calling it the infinite chicken hack. And then he was like, I could get a cow. And he's just decided he's becoming a farmer. So if anyone's got any advice on him becoming a farmer, there you go. That's that's his new plan. I might train him up. I mean, that'd be really handy because if he could grow potatoes and, and, and all sorts of vegetarian stuff, I could just eat from his farm. And uh, that would solve my food bill i guess i don't know um but yeah no that's cool <laughs> everyone else seems all right at the moment ben's getting knackered because it's end of term he's becoming a bit dramatic but he's having a good time and emily's just ticking along as always oh and claire just trundle on as, as usual um i've been doing all my calls i said in the last thing that i was feeling really down and then i found those apps last week and it was all kicking off i had a life coach a cbt person a therapist and somebody who was talking me through just job coaching to make me understand where my talents lie and what i could do more for my company that kind of thing and um it's been hit and miss it has been very hit and miss the therapist has been really cool because she just said to me all of your social anxiety and stuff like that is actually really valid. Like she was like, look, you're getting overloaded because you're autistic. It's not something you can fix. It's not something you can just go right. Boom. You know, yes, you could wear headsets and go into the environment and be on your own in that. But if you're already, like I was explaining to her, I was like, look, I, I want to go in and see everyone at the office, but I can't be around that many people. It just doesn't feel right. And I was like, I don't mind doing that at Comic-Con because I can go and hide in a side room. And she was like, that's completely valid. She was like, you you know, one of them's you're going on a jolly and it doesn't really matter if you embarrass yourself. The other one's in front of a load of professional people. And while no one's going to outright judge you, it's... I mean, someone said to me earlier, why weren't you at the event the other week? And I was like, I just can't do them. And he was like, that's fair enough, cool. And I know he's not going to judge me any more than that, but... You know, it's it's interesting. Change, but she she was very much. It's extremely valid. It's extremely normal. It's extremely common. Everything's fine. Um, we had a chat about things. She she taught me through this whole how many times of the things you're worried about happening happened when you're at work. And I said, well, look, there's been days where I've had arguments or got upset or whatever, and it's gone bad. But out of eight years, that's probably happened like ten times. So it's only it's like barely once a year. Um, I said, but that is still too many compared to everybody else. Like, yes, some of my colleagues have had arguments with people before and stuff like that. But I feel like even happening once is just wrong. It shouldn't happen. And I try and avoid that. But then I was also like, it's, I sort of raised some other things with her. And I was like, some of the things that I get worried about, I can't sleep about. I can't even have them happen once because it would just be completely end of the world, you know. So that doesn't usually help there. So she was trying to focus me on other things and... I feel positive. I think I've got like four or five more of them. And I, she seems the most helpful in terms of really challenging the things that are making me anxious. And I'm sort of sat there thinking when they finish, if I'm not fixed, I need to find a way to do that more because that actually seems quite cool. Um, the thing that really isn't working for me, and I feel a bit guilty because I'm not one to really review things badly. Like when I use a service and it's not very good, I'm always like, eh you know four out of five or something like that and um, because i try and look for the goodness so if i'm giving something a bad score i'm giving it a bad score for a reason and with cbt for me it is not helping me making me focus on what's making me stressed anxious depressed whatever and trying to think my way out of it in a little piece of paper or filling on a form i'm like are you stupid? <laughs> you know, are there people out there who genuinely haven't already done this? And they're feeling not, not them, the, the, the form's stupid. I don't want to insult people who are there going, well, I never thought of it like that. Because I have been extensively trying to figure out the solutions to my worries and whatever. And I think it assumes a lot of stuff I wouldn't have done. Or it's assuming, it's assuming a lot of things that, like it said, oh, is it a practical issue? can you solve it? Forget about it then. And I'm like, well, I can't just forget about it just because it, they're giving me this really rigid buttons to follow where you're going, if this, then this, okay, deal with it because you've written the solution. If this, then this, you can't do it. So forget about it. And it's supposed to only give you those two outcomes. But my problems fall firmly in the middle of, yeah, I can't forget about it. I mean, there was a couple of things I could forget about, but the ones that are really winding me up, I can't forget about. So it's like, you know, not helpful. Um, all of their like, examples all feel like actors and stories it's too it's too edited it's too it's not very honest or raw or realistic it's all like really polished people going 
in photos and then um you know their stories and they're like i thought everything was gonna fall apart and then my butler said why why don't you do this and they did this and it all went very well and it's like oh it's not quite the same like you're not you're not relatable in even slightly um so, I mean, I've tried to pick, I suppose, the four most common things they get, but it's just if you don't fall into one of those four exact circles, it doesn't really work. So it keeps asking for feedback, and I keep sort of saying, look, your feedback's... The feedback's even really... It's either this is good or this is bad, or this is very good or this is very bad. And I'm like, most of it's completely in the middle because it's not helping and it's not offending me. Some of it's bad. I have to try. I'm trying to find good things to say, but I got a call with them tomorrow, and I'm just going to say to them, "I'm not sure about this because I'm halfway through it now, and all you've done is really stress me out." It made me so unwell last week trying to do their first one because it was just like focus on exactly what your problems are and think about them more. And I was like, "Ah!" <laughs> you know, if I didn't have hair, if I had hair last week, I wouldn't have hair now because it was ridiculous. Um, so speaking to the, uh, where were we, on the list, the life coach was very cool because she said to me, um, you need to stop stop planning everything in your head and start writing stuff down and getting on with it. it effectively, she didn't say it so aggressively as that, but uh, she was just like, you know, if you if you actually set aside the time to do something, you have to then do it because you've set aside the time for it. Whereas if you keep thinking, at some point I'm going to do this, at some point it never comes. So I said to her, right, that makes sense to me. I'm going to have a chat with like my stream people and I'm going to say, which day shall we drop? So I've, I've decided to, I'm only streaming Sunday, Wednesday, Friday from now on. So well, Friday's already squared because I always do the podcast on Fridays. Uh, Wednesday's nice middle of the week and Sunday is you know, just a nice weekend one. So that means I have Monday, Tuesday free now every week to sit and, and write draw vlog whatever it's going to be i think because of the software i'm going to start trying to record these on mondays so i have time to actually edit them and do stuff with them um but my idea being that then i can just sit and do stuff and hopefully create some content and some value and whatever and not knacker myself because before i was kind of streaming monday thinking god i'll chill out on tuesday streaming wednesday thinking oh thursday off brilliant and doing friday i'm thinking oh saturday night another night off and i never actually did anything on those nights because i was too busy playing games till late and then when i finished streaming i watched tv till like one in the morning or whatever so um yeah i felt felt quite good yesterday i sat and i i got my old book out and started just planning it all and writing down where everything is and what the stories are. And uh, I've got it to the point where I'm fully on top of where everything is and what everything is, and I just need to continue it. And I feel like that's been quite good. I've re moved a few things around. Tonight I'm going to try and structure it a bit better and whatever, and then I'm going to push on. So I'm quite excited about that. I feel like the coach has been very useful for just helping me with little things like that and, and focusing better on them. And we talked about other bits and bobs, but it's very much just uh, stop, stop just thinking you'll eventually get to it and do it now, which is good advice. And then uh, the other person I spoke to was the the job person who basically just went through things properly and said to me, well, if you're, if you're really good at writing, you should do more writing. She talked about doing more at work, obviously, which is what the main focus is. It's about just making me... I was getting, I thought it'd be useful to talk to them because I was nervous about the fact that I've kind of ended up in this this role that used to be really, really busy and have... I used to have five different roles and now I need to focus down into one and I'm not really sure what to do. So she's been talking me through that a bit. She was also suggesting that I should do more writing outside of work because it would help me to get better at it all round and round my writing in general. And I thought that feeds into my book as well, to be fair. Um, so that's been useful. Um, she did sort of freak me out a little bit because she was saying, like, uh, long-term, you should just, like, look to become a, a freelancer who writes, f f you know, full-time, you know, over the next 10 years and... I sort of said to her, you, you realise how much debt I'm in. I c couldn't possibly uh, not just do a normal job. It, it, there's no way. Uh, there's gonna be, it's going to be at least six years before I can just stop any kind of work unless I have some incredible luck between now and then. Um, I, basically, I basically need to... I think I, I jokingly worked it out with Cloud. I was like, I need about uh, 10,000 Twitch subscribers or, um, yeah, I just need to come up with some sort of plan i need to find ten thousand people who are willing to be on like patreon ko-fi all those things like if that happens if i can get to that point you know basically half a stadium half a small stadium's worth of people then yeah all right i'll, I'll stop working and start doing, doing writing but until that happens i'm stuck um there's a lot of a lot of uh stuff i need to straighten out before then and yeah but even talking to them about that was just it was useful just being able to 
talk to someone other than I feel like when I talk to Claire about it, it stresses her out. She's like, ah. Um, but yeah, I think we're all in that at the moment, aren't we? Though we're all worrying about the cost of everything. The cost of living is insane, and we won't get into that. Um, so yeah, that is my week pretty much up to date. I've just been gaming and writing and podcasting and hanging out with people and all of that. But uh, I'm looking forward to Friday. I'm off Friday to Comic Con MCM. Going to be meeting up with Kevin Pab on the Friday, going around Comic Con, buying some stuff. It's going to be very cool. Saturday we will do our London trip. We'll go to uh, Forbidden Planet. We'll go to Fort and Mason. We'll go to the other comic shop. Pab will buy ice cream. And then I'm going out in the evening with people from the uh, Autism Creator Hub. So I'm meeting up with a load of them to, to have a pizza. Um, I was debating. I, I haven't drank since February. And I was like debating whether to have a beer and make that my rule that I only drink when I'm having like, I'll have one or two beers when I'm socializing with people. So I'm p- contemplating whether to do that or whether I still even like beer or whether. I, uh, yeah, it's it's funny kind of thinking, right. I should really make that the rule. I don't want to become someone who absolutely doesn't at all because I feel like that creates a separate problem or headache, which would bother me. Like when I go away with my mates, if I just wasn't drinking at all, I'd be so like out of the loop. It'd be weird. So that's going to be fun. And then Sunday we're doing our uh, our uh, neurodiversity panel again at 12 o'clock. I, didn't re- I don't know if I said this before, but I didn't realize the last one was only like half an hour long. This one's 50 odd minutes. So this is double the length, basically. So it must have been 25 minutes before. In my head, it was longer than that. It felt like we were there a while, but this one's double the length. So I'm quite excited that we're getting a lot more time. There is five of us this time as well. So uh, I guess we uh, we all have 10 minutes of talking each to intersperse amongst it all. Let me know in the comments if you're going to Comic-Con on the weekend and if you're going to be in the audience for that 12 o'clock on Sunday. Um, if you're about the rest of the weekend, let us know as well. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm very excited. I'm slightly nervous about getting London sick I hate getting sick in London but we'll see what happens Uh, obviously no one likes getting sick but you know what I mean Um, being around that many people is usually a guaranteed month of being unwell at least so I'm a bit miffed at the thought of that but hopefully it doesn't happen last time I wore gloves on the underground I need to find my gloves although it's not really the weather for gloves now it'll be very very hot but uh yeah, after buying rubber gloves, I realized I had normal person gloves uh, to wear. So uh, I might try and do that. Part of me wishes I had the confidence to cosplay because then I could have cosplayed as someone who wears gloves. <laughs> and then I could have walked around wearing them just being like, ha ha, I'm not a weird glove person. I'm wearing them because this is my cosplay. Um, I might have to just steal some dog paws from a furry or something. Um, although that won't be very practical, will it? But uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'm looking forward to going there and getting everyone. Every, the kids have actually given me some guidance this time that's good to go on. Like Ollie said, F and F. He said, uh, Team Titans is into uh, Minecraft, Adventure Time. You know, he's usually quite easy to buy. Emily's given me a list of mangas to buy. She she wants pages from manga to put on her wall, just in a display. And uh, Ben gave me specifics. He wanted he wants a Batmobile, a little one and uh, he wants some sort of Spider-Man book. So I'm thinking that should be easy to get, shouldn't it? Claire never knows, so I'm not going to get her anything. <laughs> I'm just going to get her jam and tea and stuff like that from Fortnum and Mason. She'll be happy with that. Um, but I, I'm going to go and go nuts. I'm hoping that... Uh, I, I don't think it's out yet. I think it's another month till the Turtles graphic novel's out. Um, the Last Ronin. I've not read... I, I don't want to be spoiled on it, so I've avoided any information on it, but I think that's out soon. Um, I also think Record of Ragnarok's supposed to be out soon, so I'm going to try and see if I can find that. But I'm looking forward to... To just being a geek it'll be fun apparently it's meant to be like three times the size of the normal comic con so we'll see what happens but yeah i'm gonna wrap up there because my lunch break is very nearly at an end uh, well i've got about another 20 minutes and so i've got to edit this <laughs> and then um yeah hopefully i get it up on time if if it was late i'm sorry if you've got any suggestions on software let me know because that'd be useful um but yeah let me know if you're at comic con otherwise i'll catch you all soon cheers bye